Today, we are reliving Super Bowl Sunday with American Vogue, getting kitschy with Vogue Portugal, and seeing GQ bomb with their cover of Killian Murphy. My name's Marco, welcome to The Model Gene, and if you are ready to dissect this month's covers, put on your boxing gloves, hit that like button, and let's get started on February's Battle of the Covers. Starting off with Vogue US, we have this Super Bowl cover with Usher and Caroline Murphy. There was actually quite a bit of backlash online about this cover by those ignorant to the history of Vogue covers of famous men paired with models. I personally really enjoy this cover. The Super Bowl and athletics in general are so much about ego and aggression, but this immediately brought the mood to someplace pure and humble. The rest of the story is really beautiful as well, highlighting Usher's personality and charisma, all in all, I'm really happy with this cover and editorial from American Vogue. British Vogue's cover with Julia Roberts features bundles and bundles of hair extensions, but it isn't terrible as far as celebrity covers are concerned. Of course, we have her signature smile as the star of the show, but when you look at the editorial, I think it's overkill. She is an Academy Award-winning actress. Give the girl a role to play instead of just asking her to lounge around and smile. Chloe Sevigny covers Vogue France, and they got a little carried away with the red here by photoshopping the tree in the background. Besides that, I would have preferred to see more of her right arm rather than just that stump, especially since the contrast between her skin and all the red is so noticeable, but it's an okay high flash cover. I love this cover of Harper's Bazaar France by Alistair McClellan. I immediately got the Twiggy reference with the hair and makeup on Catalina Spakowski and didn't even notice the text at first, but I could also tell right away that this was the work of Alistair McClellan. Twiggy's signature lower lashes are not replicated exactly, but you still get the point across. If you are going to reference an iconic moment or figure in fashion history, this is the way you do it, by injecting your own style into the image. Vogue Italia's cover by Mark Keane feels more like a Gucci campaign image than a cover shot. This oxblood color works really well with all their skin tones, the lighting is nice, and none of the models got screwed over by a bad expression in their face, as tends to happen in a group shot with this many people, but I feel like I'm being sold products rather than being sold an artistic vision. If you compare this cover to Gucci's latest campaign by David Sims, you can see the similarities, but I actually much prefer these campaign images to the Vogue Italia cover. Of the four Harper's Bazaar Italia covers, this one of Rianne Van Rompe is my favorite. She is such a capable and emotive model, I love seeing her talent. Rianne's other cover is nice as well, but I prefer the movement and delicate quality of the other image. The two other covers? I don't see any purpose for them. The one by Vivienne Sassen has this unnecessary yellow swirl that is distracting, and Nathaniel Goldberg's cover has only one interesting element, the frizzy hair. Di Repubblica describes themselves as the quality of a monthly with the frequency of a weekly, and I have to agree with them. They have been pumping out incredible imagery. The color grading and lighting on this cover of Feifei isn't revolutionary. You can see it done a thousand times by Merton Marcus, but that doesn't change the fact that this is a beautiful and visually compelling cover by Ethan James Green. Greta Hoffer by Giovanni Corabi is a bit weird in that lovely Margiela way, full of angles and distorted proportions, and although it is in a muted color palette, the model's pose makes for a compelling image. Abby Lee's cover by Alistair McClellan is honest, beautiful, understated, and a great way to usher in this new era of Gucci under Sabato de Sarno. Now to the 21 covers of Di Repubblica for their fashion issue, all shot by Robin Gallic. I am incredibly impressed by this undertaking. The casting is all from DNA models in New York City. I should say 20 models and then Monica Bellucci's Nepo model, who is incredibly out of place here. Thanks, Pier Giorgio. Besides Flaptina Bellucci, the covers are very strong, with highlights being this mod photo of Rianne in Loewe that walks the line between surrealist art and fashion, this exuberant cover of Leah in Raban, and Natalia Vodianova in a Rick Owens cape that is billowing in such a beautiful way. My favorite cover from this issue and my favorite cover of the month is of Iman Hamam. Despite her many successes, I still think Iban is underrated, and here she is not only showing the strength in her physicality, but her ability to convey emotion in her face, even in a wide shot it pushes through. This raised finger is the perfect way to break up symmetry while maintaining an overall gesture. Congratulations to Robin Garig, I am really looking forward to seeing more work from him in the future. Vogue Portugal's February covers for their kitsch issue definitely meet the brief, but I have to wonder, why this right now? Alessandra Michele's time at Gucci was so distinctly anchored in this style of dressing and imagery, but that moment has passed and is no longer driving the industry. 
My favorite is the cover of Avery Richardson. I really like the use of her body to fill the corridor in an interesting way and also give these shoes a moment of glory. They shot this cover and fashion story at the Madonna Inn in San Luis Obispo, the town where I studied architecture and where my best friend lives, so it was fun to see that space explored in the pages of Vogue. Giselle's cover of Harper's Bazaar is a great pairing of talents. She moves so incredibly well. Photographer Luis Alberto Rodriguez was a dancer before he began photographing professionally, and this influence really shows. There are lots of great images from the editorial that could have been the cover. I think this one would have been my pick. Although this one isn't made for a cover, I just love the harsh light and shadows here on a twisted mess of limbs. Numéro France, these covers are puzzling. I don't understand how they can put out four covers in 2024 that look so incredibly dated. The models are great, as well as their poses, but this flat light with white background does not inspire me to grab a copy or dig further into this issue. GQ France's cover of Kylian Mbappe is upsetting and my pick for the worst cover of the month. Malik Badian took an incredible athlete and removed all sense of power and dynamism. There is so much that you can do with someone who has trained their body to perform incredible feats, but instead we have this passive, flat, influencer starting a Shopify store looking image for the cover. Malik is once again proving that he is getting opportunities based on who he is rather than what he can do. In Killian Murphy's GQ cover, I can feel him seething with disdain for being put in this situation to have to be photographed here. It seems like they try to go for a 1970s psychedelic style with a mix of prints in the background and the overwhelming amount of jewelry, but this just looks stupid. What sticks out the most is this terrible blue blouse clashing with everything around it, and I can't even look at that belt. Killian Murphy is a treasure, but this cover is trash. L'Officiel Homme Italia's cover of actor Damiano Gavino is average, very test shoot looking, due largely to the styling. Nothing screams test shoot more than an ill-fitting turtleneck, and there isn't enough interest in the rest of the look to grab your attention. Also, his hands like this in front of his body is not very inviting or dynamic, and it would have benefited from a different pose when the clothes are so boring. I would have picked this image of Damiano in Emporio Armani instead, where the pose is more interesting and the buttons on this jacket also break up the solid color. And that is where today's review is going to end. But for more about the fashion industry, check out the links below. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the covers this month, and be sure to subscribe to find out who comes out on top next month in the battle of the covers.